<laughs> and here's Mr. Kim Adelman. He brought two plug-in conversion cars today. So two of them today, Mr. Adelman. Well, we have one converted. The other one is going to be converted in about two weeks. So this one is not yet converted. Not yet, but it's just getting ready for it. It looks good. It looks good. <laughs> this, we're going to be riding, driving people on this one. So oh, excellent. I've got one sitting here. So this is the real one that has already been converted. This is it. And when you start selling these things, um, how, how many a week can you do or how many a month? I think we could do four or five a month. Easy. Four or five right a month now. to start with? Yeah. If there were a lot of demand, uh, what would you have? Would you have to start a factory or, you know, uh, put your operation in a, a per, in a commercial building or something like that? The plan is to have the battery box all ready to pop right in the car. So we're uh -huh. hoping less than half a day for each one and we'll have probably a factory making it. Uh -huh. So I think we'll be able to have the volume that we need. How do you uh, import the batteries? Would they come in containers or...? Uh... They're not imported. They actually are manufactured in Centennial, Colorado, uh -huh. and they're just shipped. So they, press freight. so they would be just shipped to you, and then you just put them in as needed. Right. And you'd, you'd, there'd be some, there'd be some assembly of the battery packs, wouldn't there? There is assembly. We connect the modules together, uh -huh. turn it into a high voltage string, uh -huh. pop them in the battery box, and the battery box goes in the car. Hook up to about three points in the car, and it's done. Oh. This looks yeah. really professional. Wow, this is I like this. Yeah. This is good. Yeah, it, was, it is professional. Yeah, he this is it. really nice. <laughs> Put every connector on there mm. with the crimpers. I was there to assist. <laughs> I held the crimpers. He handed them to me. Like yeah, the case looks really good. <clears throat> this is the smaller pack, right? This is the medium pack. Medium pack. Mm -hmm. Wow. We're working on another case that's going to just blow you away. This is good. <laughs> This looks really nice. And this is the open source board in there? That, that's all that's required? Right. This is the open source board. Uh -huh. We do have CAN view under the front seat. Uh -huh. So you need CAN view to monitor the CAN bus. Uh -huh. And it also creates about six or seven different displays. CAN view, what's that? CAN view is created by a guy at I think his company is Hybrids Interfaces. His name is Norm, uh -huh. and he makes them by hand. And it monitors the CAN bus and displays all the information on the video display screen. And it talks to this guy to uh -huh. tell it when to open and close the contactors. Oh, so okay. what it does is it monitors the state of charge. So I know when it goes below 60, contactors close. It goes above 63, contactors open. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's good. For highway driving, it's about 71 and 72 percent. Yeah, yeah. We're doing a spoofing board. It's uh -huh. going to make the car think that the battery's 95% charged off. Yes, that's that's the trick. We, we, we did it. Yeah. I did it. So who knows what's going to happen to performance. That will be really good. Because yeah. right now with the 16 pack, it's so three, three times the EV only range that you'll get juice out of the battery. Right. So you don't get 100 plus for double. You get about 70 to 80. You heard about you heard about the Enersys um, way that they're doing it. I haven't. I, people have been talking about it, and I don't know what that's about. Well, they just took out the Prius battery, and they replaced it with a 1.1 kilowatt hour lithium battery. Uh -huh. So they went from 1.3 to 1.1. But they're using 80. But more of it's addressable. Right. <laughs> Right. So in, in your case, with 5 kilowatt hours or 3 kilowatt hours, you're increasing um, far more than they are. So your performance should actually be much better. Even when the pack is discharged, we have our pack in parallel with the OEM pack. Right. So the internal impedance is much lower, technical stuff. But what happens is we get a lot more regen capacity and more instantaneous regen. Right. So I've seen 20 amps going back into this pack, Yeah. which is really nice. I've, yeah. I've seen uh, three to four miles per gallon increase just because the pack is hooked up. That's um, what we expect. It's exactly just like it's supposed to. These yeah. batteries are, they've been, this pack has been amazing. Yeah. And these use, um, for, the, for the filling, they use the pressure switch also, right? Right, which is these guys right here on each pack. Mm -hmm. There's a channel that goes all the way through, and it's uh -huh. connected with little connectors. Each pack, so it's one uh -huh. common channel. There's a pressure relief valve at this end in right. case we get overpressure. 
but when you charge, these guys open up and say, I'm done. Uh -huh. Stop charging. And we've got the system set up where if one of them opens first, the other one keeps going until that one opens. So we end up with a pretty balanced pack, even without equalizing. Well, this is wonderful to see this. You know, the Toyota has the same thing on their pack, but you can't see it because it's underneath the car. <laughs> so they use the pressure switches for the same thing, for equalizing the battery, <laughs> but you can't, you can't get to it. And to be able to see this pack in operation, you know, alone is worth the uh, price of admission. Because <laughs> this, this actually shows how a nickel metal hydride pack works. And very rarely you need to equalize it, but you have to use the pressure switches to do that. It's part of the overall uh, equalization protocol. With our charging protocol right now, we just charge up until the pressure switch is open. It's, it's a signal for end of charge. Yes. It's not a, a safety. Right. It's, it's the signal for it. And once that happens, you're at about 1.44 volts per cell. Uh -huh. Which is, that's max. You that's max, to, right. I think the Nylar guy told me that's about 95%, which is all you want to do anyway. Yeah, the um, the Toyota protocol uses 14.5 volts. You know, 1.45 volts mm -hmm. is what the Toyota protocol uses. But uh, they, you know, which is 100%, they, they blast it at that. But they also use the pressure switches to shut off individual modules. Yeah, I, this, we're not doing individual modules with pressure. We're just right. doing individual strings. But I think we're going to have smaller strings for placement. Uh -huh. It's like we're in the right place.